Good evening, everybody. Okay, tonight, we'll have a different uh, viewpoint of what the market's doing. And basically, today's big trading move is kind of a, I don't want to say, a non uh, non-signal, a non-event, because a lot of so the question came up today that why isn't this stronger than a bullish Harami? A bullish Harami would have closed below the uh, open of yesterday or of Friday. Yet this what we have passed. Why isn't that stronger than a bullish Harami? And unfortunately, you don't have a uh, uh, DB that's about right. This is just an update in a downtrending market. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean there won't be a bounce uh, in here. The problem will be it's probably not going to be as uh, resolute, I guess is the right word, where we had the Harami Doji and then followed by the uh, uptrend. So there's one observation that you have to look at in kind of reverse. We know that the Japanese rice traders over hundreds of years have identified which things are signals that will tell us that we're in a reversal. The fact that they, this is not a signal has to be that the Japanese rice traders have seen this setup probably millions and millions of times, but know that it doesn't have a significant uh, result to it or a, a uh, something that you can put a high probability result. So what does this usually imply? Well, because I had the same questions that people were asking today in the chat room of why isn't this a strong reversal if it's even stronger than a bullish Harami, I mean, that's ludicrous. I always thought that myself. But the logic has to be, if the Japanese rice traders have had hundreds of years to identify what this signal might be, and there's nothing out there telling us what it is or what the results are, it apparently does not have a significant value to it. Which means, once you realize that, start studying how often a non-reversal signal will come up to a level and hit a resistance level of some sort, and more apt to, to back off versus giving you a, a full, full run. Same scenario over here on the uh, NASDAQ. A big up day, but not a signal. This would, been a, this would have been more of a signal had it closed right here. Because what would that have been? That would have been a hammer signal. The fact that this closed up here with the body being, or the, the uh, outdoor shadow not being two times greater than the body, that for some reason, and... We just have to take it for statistical proof that this is not a reversal signal. Otherwise, we would know what it is. The Japanese rice traders didn't go through hundreds of years of identifying things that turned up and then uh, disregarded this for some reason. Who would have forgot the spy? And in the same scenario. Now, this has some relevancy to it because look where Friday's trading took you, right down to the 200. This was a bullish signal. This is a bullish Harami bouncing off the 200. This is closing well above the previous day's open after opening positive. It's not a signal. So, Anyways, that's just something to keep in your, in the back of your mind, 
that just because there's an up day, if it's something that we don't recognize, look at it with a little bit more uh, uh, skepticism that this is a reversal. Now, what I would think would be happening is comes up, hits the T-line, backs off, and then we get a buy signal. So it may not be time to jump in, or if you're jumping in, just be prepared to, to uh, immediately reverse it. Um, or come back out of a trade and then wait for the next buy signal. Yeah, head fake or what I call a stutter step. Where they kick it up, then pull back, and then do the buy signal, kind of as a stutter step. Now what am I doing? I'm just sitting here. Okay, a couple of the biggies, like Apple. That was almost a kicker signal. Unfortunately, almost doesn't do it. That's probably close enough to say that's kind of a kicker signal, reversal to the upside. But there was other charts that were bullish, like NVIDIA, that uh, really didn't do any signal. So just got to kind of watch Amazon. Kind of the same scenario. Now, there are pieces of evidence that you could get a bounce because look where the uh, Amazon bounced off, the 34 uh moving average. Uh, the ES did, uh, I don't know how to bring that up, but that's all right, the ES, the E, uh, the minis, all right. Uh, nugget, that was significant today. You can see how we had kind of a trend kicker signal. So that uh, that's helped the uh, gold stocks. Whoops, I can do gold right here. G C A J. So this is gold. You can kind of see what's happening with gold. It's right here at the breakout area. So let's see, and what we got here on we recommended this stock, Q. HC, because of the fry pan bottom, let's see, right here was a breakout ball. Let's got to make this smaller. Okay, kind of right here at this breakout level. If you didn't buy it today, get ready to still buy it on positive trading tomorrow. Now remember, it will stay in effect as long as the uh, you stay above the T-line. This one I like, uh, GG, Gold Corp. Again, function of gold. Notice where the trend kicker occurred. Right here, breaking it out through the 50. Telling us there's probably more upside uh, to this one. ADAP. You just want a song on this one. You can see how the fry pan bottom big big breakout. Then you had kind of your message, or not message, but your consolidation. But you can see now visually the fry pan bottom that all you have to do is stay long, uh, as long as it stays above the T line. Here is something everybody needs to take notice of. On Friday afternoon. I went ahead and closed out a bunch of calls 
uh, on this one. The reason for that was, I forget where I bought the call. I think I paid three dollars and sixty-eight cents and sold them out for twenty-one ten up here. The reason for that was we were up in the overbought area. We've had a good hefty move, and look how we were starting to move a good distance away from the T line. So closing it out right here had a strategy to it. Now. Some people say, well, why did you sell when you didn't have a sell signal? Because of this factor right here, the risk reward was starting to get extensive. Now, that didn't mean that they weren't going to still take it higher, but I didn't want to hang on to calls that went from 368 to 21 in case something like this happened. So what was my safety valve? I took all my profit, and then if it continued, Continued higher on today, Monday, I could put on another strategy. I put on some spreads. Um, is that a buying climax? I don't know whether you call it a buying climax. It was just the fact, remember what the number one criteria for uh, the Japanese rice traders is. Where do most people sell? They panic sell at the bottom. Where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. So what's our kind of our rules when we get up in the overbought area? If we start seeing exuberant buying, get ready to take profits. Uh, Tom, that's what I was going to do. If this opened positive today, I may have bought the 75s and sold the 80s doing a spread which would do two things for me. Obviously, it would still be making money if the uh, the uh, price went up. I would have a lot. I mean, I had huge profits. I wanted to put those in my pocket. If it was still going up, I wanted to take advantage of it. But if it was still going up, am I in a high-risk area or a low-risk area? Obviously, this would be being in the overbought area after going up uh, almost 100%. So if I do a, did a spread, which I didn't because it didn't open positive, and we'll get to that in a minute, I did a, have a lot less money in it, and the uh, uh, the uh, price movement would have to be a lot less because of the uh, leverage out of the spread. Now, second rule or the next rule. Uh, when you see something moving exorbitantly at the top, if you're that far away from the T-line and you're up here in the overbought area and it opens lower the next day and it's trading lower, pulls out the position. Because what do you expect is happening? Profit taking. And if there's profit taking up here, where do you think the first target might be? Back down here to the T-line. What's the worst case scenario? Worst case scenario is open it lower, you close it out, they take it down, they bring it back up. Maybe not today, but tomorrow. They bring it back up. You can always buy back because what's that tell you? The profit taking's over and they're still buying. Just uh, We did a statistical uh, study on big price moves. Oh, I can't remember how many, two months ago, three months ago, that if you're in the overbought area, and it opens lower after moving away from the T line. Close out the position. Yes, right now it's trading down here in this range. This was just kind of a illustration of when you see something where your parameters are starting to get out of you're moving that far away from the T line. Take some profits, especially if you're option trade, and reestablish your option position. But you do it after uh, after things open positive the next day, telling you the bulls are still there. Court, we were short. Even with a market that was up 600 points today, they couldn't get this back up above the T line. HRTX, after the message, this is still a very safe buy because of this move right here. More than likely, you're going to be in a 45 degree. Um, 
as long as you stay above the T line. IR has just not been anything exciting, but you see what the steady eddy has been. Ever since the best friend, it's been a 45 degree. The message. Which one was it? HRTX. The message is when you see something like this where they gap it up and then they are starting to sell it off and you have a dark candle, doesn't look very uh, intriguing. But what is the message? The message was they gapped this up huge and now there's profit taking. They gapped this up huge. That was the message. That told you there was a lot of force. So if there's a lot of force to the upside, and this is profit-taking, how do we play a message? Waiting to see when the profit-taking is over. There's our bullish Harami telling us the selling has stopped. Now you can start buying because this was a the message was they gapped it up, profit-taking. Now that gap-up force is now going to be in effect. And Cato, another uh, uh, one you just want to stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. And we're still short ARCS, ACRS, ACRS. Well, Shazbots, what's going on here? Ever since this signal right here, failing at the uh, 50. So this is where you observe the obvious. The obvious is they weren't going through the 50. Secondly, remember what our uh, signal relevancy is. The bigger the signal, the more compelling it's told you which direction they're taking it. Third, you're in the oversold area. It's the uh, last factor that's not being uh, uh, confirmed. They haven't been able to get this up above the T line. You just stay short. Did I do Tesla? Tesla. Kind of failed with a hanging man Harami here at 100. Sold it off. What's the criteria been since then? They haven't been able to get the T-line. Except now what's happening? Amber signal in the oversold area. Is there any relevant uh, level? Yeah, right here where they started bottoming it out before. Ah, uh, yes, there was a, uh, yeah, some sort of, uh, oh, uh, I want to say, I mean, Citron, uh, or Citron Seller, all of the first. Uh, so, so, all right, now, on a day like today, there are tons of book like this, square, just don't know which way it's it's going. Oh. Uh, I think of all the other ones that uh, I can't think of any offhand. I'll come across them. Here's another one. This is one that was kind of a uh, uh, same scenario as uh, which one? AR, uh, ACRS, big, huge, bearish and golf. This, remember, one of the uh, uh, basic uh, you know, analysis of candlesticks is the bigger the signal, probably there's been a change of investor sentiment. Okay, now, let 
NVIDIA. Lots of charts that look like this, where they were heading down. Now they come back up, but they so they really don't have a chart set up to tell you whether you want to be long or short. So there are a lot of charts uh, as of today have kind of gone into the sideways mode. So a lot of them you want to just, uh, if they haven't done anything compelling, you close them out and you move to stocks that have had signals uh, that are relevant or that are identifiable. For example, BSM, you can see clearly that's a kicker signal. This becomes something that you want to consider buying uh, on positive trading tomorrow. Lows, same scenario. A kicker signal off the 200-day moving average. Uh, Roku, which was a short. This is why you want to understand what your signals or pattern or what your signals are telling you. Notice the big gap down. That this was a good steady short until when? Until we saw today in the oversold area that they were gapping it up above the previous day's open. Um, and started uh, started back up again. Oh yes, yeah, so, yeah. Ed Carter. Yep, he was a, he was a very good at writing formulas. Now I lost track. So this is why you want to understand each of the 12 major signals. Because right here, when they gap this up in the oversold area after being down this much, that told you there was a, uh, a, uh, a kicker signal in progress. You wanted to close out. Remember, a kicker signal is your strongest signal. So RT, yes. If this opens positive tomorrow, there's a good likelihood you're going to have a, a, a good, strong uptrend. Even the dull trading ones, look at Microsoft, gapped up. I don't trade Microsoft because it's too slow moving. And even Intel, another kicker signal. I'd probably be more apt to trade this one just because of a better percentage move. Uh, I haven't even taken a look at Google. Google is uh, more of a signal. Now remember, some of the uh, trading today was they, reversals, they just weren't signals. Whereas Google had more of a signal in the sense that it did a hammer doji. And if it opens positive, doing a hammer doji, gapping up above the previous day's open, Um, what do we got going? We got a bullish flutter kicker in progress. An MD, not quite a bullish kicker signal, but I think it was their earnings. Um, kind of expect some more off of this one. XC, you can see the morning star signal. And where did this occur? Right smack dab uh, off the, the uh, T line, creating a high probability J hook up. SPWR. And it got a pattern setting up. So if this opens positive, you've got a high probability uh, bullish trade.
PAGSJ hook pattern and notice how they got to the resistance level today. They gapped through it. So just think of the uh, rationale of gapping through the resistance. Everybody knows there's probably a resistance level here. But if they gap through it, what's that telling you about the investor sentiment at the resistance? It's not going to act as resistance. Um, it's probably going to go, go higher. Let's see what else we got here. IEB. See where this fry pan bottom closed right here at the 50. It opens positive. What's it telling us? One, they're confirming the Doji bullish confirmation. Two, the fry pan bottom breakout. And three, 50 is not going to be acting as resistance anymore. So that becomes a very uh, high probability trade setup. This is what you're looking for whoops, at the breakout levels. And a fry pan bottom breakout creates that high probability trade. This is why patterns are so effective produces just a high probability trade setup and then a very easy uh, method to stay with trade. As long as it stays above the T-line, you can stay long. On the other side of the coin, you see a fry pan bottom setup. Let's get rid of that. And at the breakout level, it fails. It tells you immediately if you were in this trade or thinking to get in, getting in, you don't. Or if you were in it, you get right back out. Because what do we expect at the breakout level? You get to break out. What about stocks open and then go lower at 945 each morning? Look at Labu. When would you buy? I'd start seeing it in here, but notice in here we don't have any real buy signal. Hey, right here, notice we have kind of a little, a little uh, shallow uh, fry pan. And then look what happened over here. You had your doji sandwich breakout of a the bigger pattern. That's when I'd probably start buying. Yes, straight off the 10 minute chart. IMMU, up to another breakout, just a nice steady. Anytime you see a setup, just go to your your uh, key line. Stay long as long as it stays above the key line. That's why it wasn't working the way I thought it should be. Here's a breakout. And then here's your 45 degree. IMMU. Going back up on a morning star type signal through the uh, T line, start watching this one. Do you look for confirmation signal? Uh, no, I look for confirmation of the. Remember, the signal is the indicator that told us there's been a change of investor sentiment. So if we see the signal, what's happening right here? Fate. Got a morning star signal, and where did it close? Right smack dab on the T line. So if it opens positive tomorrow, that's our confirmation. That's confirming this signal. 
What else is that telling us? It's telling us the T line's not acting as resistance anymore. So you get double confirmation that this signal is now working. How big does the green candle have to be to be a kicker? Uh, substantial. I mean, you want to, if it's a doji type day, that's not really a kicker. Lou, which one are you, re or no, Lou, John, which one are you referring to? Old, that's worth looking at because look what happened Friday. An inverted ham, bullish confirmation. Under Armour, OG gap up. Where do you think next target is likely to be? Right back up here to the 200. A general question. The bigger the signal, so a kicker signal... Which ones were they? You want to see that it was a substantial day in this direction, and then a substantial day in that direction to be a, a true kicker. Beastie, you had your buy signals here. Look at your hammer and you started getting bullish confirmation, what we call your double doji setup. A couple of days of indecisive trading, positive, and then you'll see what's happening in your whole chart. Now what's this become? Wave one, wave three, now wave one, wave two, wave three. How long do you wait for confirmation after it opened? Depends on how the market's opening. If the market is so strong and the stock that you're looking to buy is opening strong, you might be within the first 30 to 90 seconds. If the market's opening weaker and trading lower for the first 45 minutes, it might be 45 minutes before you decide to, to start uh, coming into a trade. We'll do that one night uh, on your entry and exit strategy. We'll do a member's night uh sometime soon. CNDA CN, and CDNA. Kind of a slow curve breakout. I expect a 45 degree. And ARAY. Eh. Something uh, but if you were short, you could short the stock that cheap. I'd start watching it. For some reason, I don't know how it got on here. Ah, I know. Because I, I just hit the wrong symbol. This is the one. A-R-R-A. -R -R -A. Inverted hammer doji right on the 50. Bullish confirmation up through the, uh, the T-line. This one has a high probability coming back up to the top of the trend channel, giving you about a, a 10%. Adobe a kicker? Not quite. It's almost. The true kicker would have opened here. Now, it still gives you probably the relevancy of a kicker signal, even though it's not technically an exact kicker signal. So I put this in the same category as a non-signal. That looks good. You're probably going to be more cautious when you get to a resistance level. Potentially profitable than ADAP. Oh, let me get through the other ones here. Shake Shack, another one that's doing a morning star signal with the third day gapping up. And uh, so this one is a very good setup. Because if it opens positive, it's confirming your morning star signal and breaking this little kind of downward trend. That's That's got a good chart to it. So you'd have a wave one, wave two, going in wave three, probably taking you at least back up to the highs. All right, on the sell side... 
This one you get ready to go short. AKCA. Hanging Man. Doji. Doji. Shooting Star. Bearish left right combo. Now, is that a weak signal? It would be a weak signal on a normal day. It's definitely a weak signal when the market's up uh, five, six hundred points. So that's something you get ready to go short on any weakness. LCI, Lynette. You can see the slow curve. You can see how it's broken. Now you have wave one, wave two going into wave three to the downside. Silica, same scenario. If this opens weaker, you're breaking this support level. Wave one, wave two going into wave three. Uh, Visto, Vista Outdoor. Notice the left-right combo breaking this uh, little trend. That one can be shorted. And CRTO, you can see the slow curve. And where did you close today? Right here on the 50. So if it opens lower tomorrow, what's that telling us about this kind of dumpling top? They're breaking it down through the 50. Where's your next target? Life coming down, filling the gap. Oh, Keto, oh, AKCA. ATUS, another one. Notice where the failure was. The 50. Now you got a dumpling top, and where did it close today? Right at the low over here. If it opens lower, now what do you have? Wave one, wave two, going into wave. Three. And A O B C. Dumpling top. Is your next likely target if it opens lower? We can see what your trend is, probably somewhere at least here, and then possibly all the way down here. AD80, in your opinion, is there anything more profitable? Potentially profitable, probably. This one's just now in a steady uptrend. And Quip, good chart, but you're looking for the breakout and positive trading. Legend, that's a morning star signal, right smack dab off the 50. Where's your likely target? Well, you can see that you can probably draw a trend channel right through the tops, through the bottom. That could mean your next wave is up up there. All right, uh, Jim, go ahead and do the double line. Jim, are you awake? Oh, Jim, Jim there. Okay, then 3.2 seconds to the next double line. Uh, CBOE, yes, kind of a morning star signal, but I'd still be more uh, aggressive with it coming back up through the T line. Amp. Stay long, nice fry pan bottom. Sandstorm, stay long, don't let it close back below the 50. Spreads. No, you can be buying this one. Oh. Just watch what it does once it gets to the 34 or this area, because 
You're still in a downtrend. Uh, this, yeah, this is a Harami hammer. In the, just hit the oversold area. So if it opened positive tomorrow, you close out your short position. If it, if you close it out, you could always put a sell stop just below today's low. I'm sorry, today's open. Because if it opens positive and comes down, they're still taking it down. CROX, inverted hammer Harami, bullish confirmation. Nothing to do here except to see a sell signal. Netflix. That's closer to a uh, kicker type signal. And remember, the true kicker does not have a tail on the downside. Or even if it does, it still represents a ma major change of investor sentiment. You can be in this one on positive trading. Mm -hmm. Uh, this one has to open positive and trade positive. Look what's happening up here. You're losing steam in your statistics. Doji Harami, shooting star. Doji, shooting star, doji. Little left-right combo. If this opens lower tomorrow, I'd close it out. An HTGM. Uh, boy, if you're short... You stay short if you could have shorted it. You definitely don't want to be long in this one. STX. This is the type that have kind of become non-tradable because they aren't good for shorts yet, and they aren't showing anything long. So these are the type that you don't want to be in right now. If you are short, this one has to open lower and trade lower tomorrow, say, and if it opens positive, you close it out. CPE, all you can do here is stay long. Legend, we did that one. That's the Morning Star Signal. Nugget, we did. Just stay long. I would suspect first target is the 50-day moving average. XPO, another one type that you just get rid of until you get a better uh, uh, view of it. If you were short, if it opens positive tomorrow, you close out the short position. Wouldn't necessarily be going long yet, but uh, I'd be out of the short position. UNH. Another one that is just kind of a non-chart uh, analysis. That if you were short, you would have covered your short today with a trading above the high, but I wouldn't be going long. Capote. Still can't figure it out. If, the oh boy. I guess you should have been out of it yesterday. You wouldn't be back in it, though. So right now I wouldn't be in Chipotle at all. There's uh, that uh, When it closed back below the key line with a bearish engulfing signal, that would have had me out of the trade. Lost your cursor. Yeah, if I had a dime for every time I've heard that. Amazon, you're likely to get a bounce as a universal signal, but there is evidence that it's supported here on the 34. Tractor supply. Uh, stay short. Or if you didn't, if you covered your short today, or if you didn't cover your short today, 
be ready to cover it if it comes up through today's high. APH, same scenario. Now that is a bullish harami. If it opens positive, you cover. Worst case scenario, it comes back down through that the open of today, you can reshort it. Right, but this is your typical chart right now. Um, you have to see what each individual chart does. The markets aren't telling us anything of any great consequence as far as whether they're strong buying or that the selling has stopped. Dropbox can't give you any help there. Um, not enough information. We do taco. Taco is one of those where I would be long or short at this point. AMD, stay short on this one. Micron, another one that if it opens positive tomorrow and you're short, you cover the short position. To stay short, it has to open lower. An IWV. Uh, again, this is a typical uh, uh, index charts, Russell 3000. Um, not a good, not not a not nothing that you can get a good analysis on. SDS, same scenario. DXD, same thing. These are just now charts that you can't really get uh, a good grasp. We need more information. So that means you just have to sit for a day or so to fi figure out what, they're, what the market is finally planning on doing. DVX, DVA Act, stay long. Once it broke out through this level, notice your left-right combo. And then this is why candlestick signals are more relevant. Had this come up and done an indecisive trading day right here, told us to look out. But the fact that they did a strong candle right through that level gives us immediate emption that there's no selling resistance at that level. SYK. Uh, very simple. When it's positive and you're short, you cover your short. If you're thinking of going long, you still have to wait for it to get up through the uh, through the T line. J Nug, want to see this get up through the 200 tomorrow? K Nag, K Nag, not found. Uh, Spartan Motors, nothing. Uh, if you are long, it has to open positive tomorrow. You definitely want to see it get through that resistance level. Facebook, if it opens positive, uh, you definitely want to cover your short positions. MTSI, just stay short. Did we try to do this? The fact that it opened and traded below this level told you your uh, dumpling top was still in effect. Oh, no, it's not time to buy. As a matter of fact, it's time to maybe watch for a big, big uh, splash to the downside. Dollar General, another one where there's nothing there to give you any idea what, what to do. Move on to something else if you're... Uh, I would just close it out for two reasons. Because, one, you can tell what's happening right here, right now. And, two, the overall chart really isn't all that good. Move on to something that uh, gives you much more clarity. ADM, you can buy this one on positive trading in the institutional trader, so it's not going to give you any huge uh, rate of return. And Caterpillar, same scenario. Look. Look at your direction. If you were short, you would have covered your short 
today, I definitely wouldn't be going long, though. And Goldman, same scenario. If you were short, you should have covered it today, but I wouldn't be going long. Boeing, same thing. I don't know whether, yeah, I would have still covered a short position. You can start buying this one if it does come up through the... Uh, the T line. Hey, Hospital of America, you can short this one on weakness. I think all the hospital stocks were uh, have been selling off. Why? Why? Another one that I probably wouldn't be long or short. There's just not enough energy in either direction. I'd be someplace else. 3M. That's a toughie to trade because the percentage. Well, it's getting a little bit better. Uh, this is another case where if you had been short with today's bullish harami, if it opens positive, you cover your short position. I think we did STX, same scenario. If you're short and you didn't cover it today, you cover it on positive trading tomorrow. Square, same thing. If you were short, if it opens positive tomorrow, you close out the position. J bug A P A P A P J Nug Oh there you go. Look for it to open above the fifty. Get rid of these. Uh, Western. Wow. Uh, Western, same thing. If it opens positive, you cover your short position. If you're short, it has to open lower tomorrow. I think we did ECYT. Yes, close it if it opens lower. I think we did UNH. Uh, one that uh, you should have covered today. If it opens positive in your short, you should have closed it. And Zenga, nothing wildly exciting, but as long as you stay above the T line, you can stay long. Regardless of whether or not there's a specific Japanese candlestick pattern, wouldn't you buy if it's above the T-line? Megan, are you referring to something specific? Um, we did you know, FIN. Again, on something that's moved that far away from the T-line, when it opened lower, you should have closed it out. The worst case scenario is you should have had a sell stop at this level. It shouldn't have down through this level because if it did, where was it going to? Right back to test the T line. Then from there, I think it's trading down here after hours. Home pot. Nothing wildly exciting here. If you were short, if it opens positive tomorrow, you cover your short position. Don't know whether I'd be a buyer but I definitely would be out of the short position. EXC, that's a nothing chart. I uh, wouldn't pay attention to this one until it gets back up above the 200. You can see you have kind of a bobble set up. These are home. That one got uh, whacked. No, no, maybe it wasn't be their home. Uh, Rhetorically, which direction is this moving in? Wouldn't be long or short. Uh, no, not necessarily. If it goes up through the T line, uh, Look at your look at your uh, trend here. 
if you buy it, here's your resistance level right here. There's just nothing compelling about this chart. Just because there's get a buy signal, it doesn't mean it's going to go very far. We did did we do Newmont? Newmont because it broke out, you stay long. Disney. Another one that if you had been short, you're ready to cover it if it opens positive after your bullish harami. I don't even know what the uh, aftermarket uh, futures are doing. Like Amazon, where, where it's close above the T-line, even though not really a hammer. Uh, yes. What one did you just say, Amazon? If you've got something like this, a ah, humbug. You can see there's buying going on, but you just watch to see where your first resistance levels are, because it's not a uh, it's not a strong reversal. So I'd watch to see what happens right about here. Why well, I'm up to another uh, 89. All right. All right, so more than likely we're going to see a bounce from here. But I will still stress that you may see a bounce versus a wholesale reversal. Now, that also comes into play where we really haven't seen anything dramatic in this market. It's kind of been pretty much sideways when it broke the wedge formation. So where could it come back to? That's kind of the bottom of your wedge. Watch to see what it does when it comes up here to the 34. So it's not that prices won't, oh, for crying out loud, it's like having a, a tail. It's not that prices aren't going to go up further or aren't going to go up. It's that they're probably not going to go up with the same magnitude. It's just a short move up until usually it hits the first uh, resistance level. So it's not see a full-scale reversal, but we will see some eyes. It's just a little bit more, should be a little bit more skeptical, but skeptical, doubtful when, it, when you see it hit a uh, resistance level. Okay. Any more questions before we all fade into the sunset? That's right. More than a dribble and less than a launch. Okay. All right, everybody. So no reversal signals. No, not in the indexes. Just telling us to be a little bit more cautious. Uh, the Bonanza, if you're in the Bonanza, you're going to get, uh, when they see a good setup, then they will tell you what to do with a specific option. And usually it's a limit where they say don't buy it above this level or don't buy it below this level. But like any other trading oh, person, we have in here the whole benefit of candlestick analysis we can see much more clearly what's going on in investor sentiment that means you can use the candlestick signals and patterns alone meaning by themselves as a very viable trading entity or whether Hubert or uh, Chuck Hughes or somebody else comes on and you want to use their program, if you overlay the candlesticks on top of it, you're going to be able to see what they're looking at, which hopefully has some sort of statistical value to it, and get a better clarity uh, uh, by putting candlestick, analyzing candlestick charts. So the last thing anybody wants to be doing is 
looking at somebody's recommendation that you've subscribed to and just blindly buy it or sell it when they say buy it or sell it. Look at the charts. If they're recommending it's time to sell, you want to definitely look at your your candlestick charts and analyze, yeah, I think this is a good time to, to sell or that all kind of fits together. Oh, boy, I was supposed to call Bill Johnson last week, and I will do that. What is tomorrow? Well, it's Tuesday already. Okay, we will. Get, I will make sure I talk with Bill tomorrow. Okay, everybody. Oh, the options room is on our site. The bonanza. Uh, uh, the bonanza uh, program is we we have given all our formulas and indicators uh, to trade winds. When they see a signal, not only do they uh, identify the signal to go after, but they also identify which option is the best one as far as value to participate in that trade. I don't put out the cash bonanza. They use our information to to identify uh what they're trading. Now, their style might be a little bit different, meaning they're probably a little bit more conservative than the ideas I put out into the, in the options room. Okay. All right, everybody. With that, we'll see you in the chat rooms tomorrow. We'll see you then.